Hey guys, MTG New Bag. I'm on planeswalkerslibrary.com. Go check it out. They're our awesome sponsor. We've been through the white cards that have been spoiled so far. Let's talk about the blue cards. Cloudfin Raptor, 1-1 one, one for a 0-1 at common. Bird Mutant, I have to say, all the creature types that they're coming out with are very strange. So don't be surprised if some of the uh, creature types startle you a bit. Uh, it has flying, which is nice since it's a bird and a mutant. mutant some mutants fly, I guess. Uh, it has Evolve. So Evolve says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. I actually think this guy's going to be pretty good. You'll probably be able to grow him to a 2-3 within reasonable time. I mean, he'll become a 1-2. And then let's, you know, then he'll become a 2-3. And I think at that point, he's going to be a little bit harder to grow. But with all the shenanigans that the Simic do, moving counters and such, it uh, it might be okay. I like him. All right, then we have another avatar. I guess this is going to be some sort of uh, cycle of avatars. Uh, yeah, sure. Diluvian, sorry. Primordial. It costs 7, just like the other one. So I'm assuming they both cost... Uh, all cost seven. Uh, five and two blue for a rare five five avatar creature with flying. When this enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may cast up to one target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If a card cast this way would be put into a graveyard from this turn, exile it. Uh, I kind of like this card a lot. Uh, if the format's slow enough, these guys are going to be good. They're not even close to on par with the level of the Titans, in my opinion. So I think these are quote-unquote fixed Titans, so to speak. Um, this can be devastating if they have a really good, you know, instant or sorcery in their graveyard. It can be crap, you know, but a 5-5 five, five Flying Dragon, although being for 7, is still pretty decent, definitely, in... Uh, limited, not going to see play in Constructed, you know, I just, I don't see maybe as a finisher in a Control Mirror, but I highly doubt it. Alright, let's talk about this gigantic mythic, um, Enter the Infinite. You have 8 for colorless and quadruple blue, so it's a sorcery. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your library, then put a card from your hand on top of your library. You have no maximum hand size until your next turn. Alright, so this card is basically going to say, you better win this turn, and I'm sure there are some weird combos out there that want this, but 12 casting cost, I'm just going to go with the simple no thanks route and move on. I'm not going to try to even break this card. If it turns out that somebody breaks it, maybe I'll play with it. I do love the art. The art is great. Uh, I like how they have like one of those little pill bugs, it looks like, right here that rolls up into a ball, so that's always fun. But uh, no thanks. I'll pass on that one. All right, uh, Gridlock, X, and Blue, Instant, Tap, Target, X, Target, Non-Land, Permanence. It's uh, uncommon. This card is very good. It leads to blowouts when people are not expecting all their permanents to be tapped down, creatures especially. It's very swingy. It's really nice. Um, I like it. I think it's a very good trick, especially with combat. Uh, I can't really foresee other permanents that you want to tap down because, you know, eh, I get, you, tapping a planeswalker does nothing. Uh, I guess, you know, if the Planeswalker becomes a creature of some sort, then that's fine as well. Tapping an enchantment's not usually going to do anything. Uh, tapping an artifact might be relevant at times, but probably not that likely. So I think this is more or less a really solid combat trick in blue. And with Simic being in the mix, green being in the mix, you're probably going to be playing some fatty. So I think this is going to be really nice, and I like how it kind of looks like a... Uh, a starfish even though you know it's just a bunch of traffic and everything's getting bottlenecked hands of binding Mwahahaha. I don't know why I feel that this card is evil but it might be let's see <laughs> two casting costs one in a blue for a sorcery tap target creature and opponent controls that creature doesn't untap during its controllers next untap step okay so you play this on a dude and then you throw it on another creature uh, that's the Cypher ability. So Cypher says, then you may exile this spell. So you got to play it first. That's step one. Um, 
spell card encoded on a creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. I think this is going to be good in very annoying draft and, you know, uh, sealed decks if they have a good creature out. So you cast it, their dude is like, oh, I'm tapped, I don't untapped. So hypothetically, if they don't play another creature and you cipher this, you encode it onto one of your creatures, you might get to do it again so you could get a lot of advantage out of a card like this. Leyline of Phantom. Now, people say this is the worst card in the set so far. Uh, my opinion's a little bit different, but I think usually the mass, when the masses speak, they're usually correct. So Leyline Phantom, it's an illusion. It costs five, so four and a blue for a five-five. Um, when Leyline Phantom deals combat damage, uh, return it to its owner's hand. All right, so you're paying five for a five-five. First, it's an illusion, and it doesn't have when it becomes targeted sacrifice. It so I like that. I would love if it had flying. I think originally I thought it had flying, but I guess not. Um, so here's my thought. You have a five-five. It blocks for a turn, so they can't get through it. Then you swing with it. And if they chump it, you bounce it back to your hand and you replay it. And now you have a 5-5 five five blocker again. So if they don't chump it, they take 5 and it's in play. I don't think it's as terrible as everybody's saying, but usually I'm wrong about these things. So I would probably say I'm living in some sort of magical Christmas land on this one. All right, and here is probably one of the best blue cards spoiled for the set so far. Rapid Hybridization uh, costs one blue. It's an instant for an uncommon, and it has the words destroy target creature on it for blue. So that's fantastic. It just says, hey, anything that doesn't have hexproof, I'm going to kill it. And in exchange, they get a 3-3 three, three frog lizard, which apparently is a thing, um, creature, and they get to put a token of that creature type onto the battlefield. So remember Beast Within and it costed three but it dealt with any permanent and then they got the three three. Usually the token was manageable and in this case okay you pay seven mana for your bomb I kill it I give you a three three. Alright seems like a good deal. I mean I also think this might see some some play maybe getting flashbacked via a snapcaster but I don't think a snapcaster deck deals with a 3-3 very well but I think getting more than one use out of this would would be pretty nice okay so let's uh, talk there's a few more blue cards and then we'll shift into black in the next video Simic Flux Mage yes that's right Flux not the other kind of word that would get you in trouble for being an F swear it costs two and a blue. It's a merfolk wizard, so it has a relevant creature type in wizard and merfolk, two relevant creature types. It's an uncommon. It has evolve, so whenever it enters the battlefield, uh, uh, another creature enters the battlefield, if its power and toughness is bigger, you can put a 1-1 counter on this. And it has one and a blue tap, move a 1-1 counter from this card onto target creature. So I really like the fact that you can do that uh, at any time. I feel that that's kind of going to lead to some blowouts, especially if you have flash creatures. Um, but putting a 1-1 one, one counter is, it's, it's limiting, you know, but it's nice that you can keep doing it and reusing it and reusing it, assuming he doesn't die. I think this guy's going to be a high pick and draft, definitely playable in the, uh, at the pre-release. So I would play him and just see how awesome he can turn out to be. Okay, and finally we have a rare stolen identity. I definitely like the art on this one. Um, he, it's a sorcery for six mana, four and two blue. Put a token onto the battlefield. That's a copy of target artifact or creature. So it is like a clone, although it makes you know a copy. Um, that's a token. So you know tokens die. I would say easier than you know cards, but still. And it has cipher. So it's really nice. It does kill legendary creatures, so keep that in mind. Uh, if there's a bonkers artifact that hasn't been released yet, you can always copy it and then cipher onto a good creature and then try to keep doing it, which would be really, really nice. Once again, I'm a big fan of the art. So that has been the blue spoilers.
Thanks for watching. Please check out the mtgnoob.com and make sure you stop by our sponsor, planeswalkerslibrary.com. Thanks.